friends, it's Princess Rosa and today I bring you a different type of video. If you follow me on any social media, you may know that my art is, well, pretty inconsistent. I am someone who hasn't found the style she wants to have yet and honestly really likes to experiment with stuff. But the one thing that is consistent in my art is the way that I color hair. Which is something that apparently some people that follow me on Instagram were interested in learning. And well, here's a tutorial for you. Disclaimers! For this tutorial, I am assuming that you already know your basics of digital art. You know, things like how to use blending modes and clipping masks or layers and all that kind of stuff. If you don't, I'll leave a couple of videos by other creators explaining what those are on different programs or apps right in the description, so just go ahead and check that out. This video is gonna cover four basic hairstyles slash hair types, which are wavy, straight, curly, and short. If people like this video, I might cover other types of hair, but for now, we're only doing those and I don't even know if I'm gonna do more, so I don't know, only time will tell. And finally, this is my first time making a tutorial, so please go easy on me. Also, I am not a professional, I'm a self taught artist, so, you know, um, something to keep in mind if what I'm doing is not necessarily realistic or super efficient. This is a coloring tutorial and not a drawing one, but I will go over some basic tips on how I do my hair liner that can complement this type of coloring. First of all, I use line weight, which is basically varying the thickness of your lines. And the way I do it is that I add more thickness to the parts of the hair that have more weight to them. Also, when you're drawing hair, remember that your hair is thinner on the tips, so try to make the ends of the hair small. And even if they have a small curl, don't go full thick on them when you're doing your liner. I love wavy hair! It's the type of hair that I draw the most, and even if a character doesn't have canonically wavy hair when I'm doing a fan art, I try to find a way to incorporate it. So first of all, as you can see, I'm gonna be using a wine color for the shadows and a yellow for the highlights. I often find these colors or anything similar to them to work the best for me when I'm working with neutral lights. Now in this tutorial, you're gonna need a liner layer. Here I have the hair on a separate layer because I'm using this head as a base for different hairstyles, but you're free just to do your liner that you would normally do it. But you do need to have the base color of your hair on a separate layer because the first thing you're gonna do is create a new layer on top of the base one and clip it. Then you're gonna change the blending mode to multiply and this is gonna create our shadows. By the way, I'm going to be using the symmetry ruler because like this video is going to be pretty long and hard to edit. So, um, yeah, I just want to make things easier for me, you guys. So bear with me. And then you lower the opacity of the layer depending on how you want the color to look. Usually for me, it works somewhere between 35% to 50%. Anyways, you're going to take a regular brush and we're going to cover what I like to call the backside of the hair, which is everything that lies be behind the ears that you can see as you are seeing on the screen, for example the parts that I'm coloring, you're gonna cover them entirely on your shadow color. You also wanna add these to the parts that have more volume on them. Now what you're gonna do is that you're gonna grab an airbrush or soft brush depending on the program you're using and you're gonna take the parts where there's more weight applied to them, this is when the line weight comes to help, and just shade them with a soft brush. You can also add shadows to the parts that are covered by more hair or accessories. After that, you're gonna grab your regular brush tool and begin to do hair strands. The way that I do this is that I try to connect them, whether it is in the middle, the beginning or the end, to some of the shadows that I drew with the airbrush. You know, it just, it just has to touch it, it doesn't have to be connected to it all the time. You're basically creating the idea that there's different and smaller sections of hair. Something that I recommend you to do is to follow the shape of the hair you created with your line art. Try to use your line art as a guide on how the hair strands you're creating or the hair sections you're creating are going to move. Basically, you want to keep the shape of your hair consistent.
Now for the top of the hair, you want to create this zigzag shape that blends to the root section, the one that you already shaded. And this is an effect that I got mostly from anime, but it has stuck with me ever since I was in elementary school and I still do it. And I, I don't know, it's not necessarily realistic, but I think it looks good. And then you're gonna grab your airbrush tool or a soft eraser, depending on what program you're using, and you're gonna erase the tips that you just draw. Trust me, this works. Just do it, it's fine. If you feel like you erased too much, just go over it again with the airbrush using your shadow color. It's fine. And with that, your shadows are done. Now we're gonna do our highlights, and this is pretty similar to how I do shadows, except the last step is backwards. So the first thing we're gonna do is that we're gonna create a new layer and we're gonna clip it, and we're gonna put it in, in add mode or add glow in case of Clip Studio Paint, because I, I just like how that one looks instead of just the regular add. For this one, I recommend you to turn down the opacity pretty low, somewhere below 20% or 30% because this, this, this makes your colors look bright, like bright. Grab your highlight color and your airbrush tool and basically what you're gonna create is a soft highlight on the parts that you didn't shade on the top of the head. And then with the regular pen, we're gonna create those zigzag triangle shapes that you're looking on the screen right now. It's basically the same process as the shadows, but backwards. And then you're gonna use a soft eraser again in order to kind of blend in the tips. And now continuing the idea of the same process, but backwards, we're gonna start doing the little hair strands that are gonna be your highlights. Don't overdo it, because like if you overdo it, your character's hair is gonna look too shiny and it's gonna look super oily, and I don't know about you, but like, I don't like when my normal hair looks super oily, so why would I like that for my characters? Unless you're actually going for that look, which in that case, good for you, man. And then you're gonna grab your airbrush tool and then add a soft highlight to the parts of the hair that have less weight to them. And honestly, at this point, you're pretty much done. You can just leave the drawing as it is and it will look great. But if you really want to go the extra mile, well... Go to your liner layer and lock it or create a clipping mask above it. And then, using the eyedropper tool, select the shadow color that is on the character's hair. And then with the color wheel, you're gonna use that color and make it go a little bit darker. And basically, you're gonna color your liner with that color. And if you want to go the extra extra mile, you're going to create a new layer and basically this layer is going to be for extra hair strands. This is going to be above your liner layer and what you're going to do is that you're going to use the eyedropper tool to select some colors that are in different sections of your hair and just create some extra hair strands that go out of the liner. And with that, you're done. And now you may be thinking, Rosa, my character doesn't have wavy hair. My character has regular, straight, flat hair. Well, you're in luck because we're also doing that today. Here's the thing. Straight hair, it's super easy to do. Because there's not a lot of movement, you just get away with the simple shadows and highlights and you're pretty much done. Like, let me show you. We're gonna create a new layer above our base color layer, we're gonna clip it and put it in multiply and select your shadow color because this is gonna be your shadow layer. With your regular brush, just go ahead and shade the back side of the hair. Once again, try to play with the opacity in order to achieve a color that you like. And then you're gonna grab your airbrush. And you're gonna create a soft shadow on the root of the hair. 
I decided to do the triangle zigzag shapes now because it's just easier with straight hair to do it this way, especially with short straight hair. Just go ahead and draw that. And, you know, erase it with a soft brush or soft eraser again. Since the weight of the hair is pretty constant and it doesn't vary that much, I'm just going straight to doing the hair strands. And with straight hair, I find that less is more. So try to keep it simple. If your character has any sort of bangs or a fringe, you can just grab your airbrush tool and just airbrush the bottom of the bangs to give it some dimension. I don't always do this, but sometimes it's good to add a soft airbrush as well to the bottom of the hair. And with that, your shadows are done. Let's get to the highlights. You know the deal, new layer, clip it, add glow, and lower down the opacity. Select your highlight color and okay, this is not something that I do exclusively with straight hair, it's something that I do with straight bangs. With your regular brush, you're just gonna create this sort of C-shaped look and just color in the whole thing. And then with an eraser or transparency mode, you're just gonna delete little sections of it in order to create smaller squares and rectangles. I've definitely seen this in anime and I'm pretty sure I got this from Tokyo Mew Mew, so... Again, I, I think it's pretty obvious that my style has a like, slight anime influence to it. And then you're gonna grab your airbrush tool, go over it with the highlight color, and then try to soften it out with the transparency mode or your soft eraser. Coloring the liner, just add the extra hair strands and you're pretty much done! I told you it was easy! And by the way, if you're working with two-tone hair and your character has like the tips of their hair in a different color you can create a new layer above your base layer clip it and just add that secondary color there and since we're working with blending modes you can see that the shadows and highlights adapt pretty easily to it you don't have to do anything else if you already did the extra hairs just add a clipping layer above them or lock the transparency and select the color from your character and just airbrush the tips of the strands of the hair and she's done and she looks gorgeous. Now, if your character has the complete opposite hairstyle, and I mean curly hair, how would you color it? Well, this one's pretty different. When I'm working with curly hair, I usually covered my shadow layer entirely on the shadow color. And then with the hard eraser or the transparency mode on your regular brush, I create these little bulbs of hair to create the idea of volume. So basically these are little patches where the hair is sticking out. Try to think of curly hair as a mass, as a unit, not as separate hair strands because all of the hairs are compressed together. And then you're gonna go over them lightly with an airbrush. And then you're gonna select your shadow color and try to define some of the hair sections while still using your airbrush tool. If your character has bangs or a fringe, just color them the way you do it with straight hair. Thank you. 
after that, we're gonna move to our highlight layer. And I'm keeping the opacity all the way up so you can see what I'm doing, but it's basically highlighting the places that do not have shadows on them. So basically where we can see our base color. And as you can see with the opacity lower down, it looks like the hair has a lot of volume, which is something that we're looking for when we're working with curly hair. Now with this type of hair, it's actually necessary to create the extra hair strands. And basically what you're gonna do is that you're gonna draw over the line art little pieces of hair that are popping out. You can do this with a regular brush and just create some soft curl shapes or you can just look up for a curl brush. There's plenty of them online and a lot of them are free. The one I'm using here, it's completely free. You can also add some of them on the inside of the hair for texture. And then you're gonna create an extra layer above your extra hairs layer. And you're gonna use your airbrush tool to blend everything together. And with that, you're done. I definitely forgot to color the line art design, but honestly, sometimes I do that with my actual drawings and they still look good. So, you know, you don't have to do that step all of the time, as I mentioned at the beginning. And with that, let's move to the final hairstyle. Short hair is pretty simple to color. Since it's mostly following the shape of the skull, you don't need to add a lot of hair strands, just in a couple of parts that it feels right. So you're just gonna create your shadow layer and you're just gonna shade the back side of the hair. Usually with short hair, I like to add bangs for some visual interest. And what I do with those bangs is that I add the hair strands in there because that's the only place where I can. And then with the roots of the hair, we do exactly the same that we did with the wavy and straight hair, but we want to add a couple of strands on the top part of the head. Go ahead and soften everything that you can with an airbrush until it looks right. And we're gonna highlight the bangs. This character has side bangs, so the way that I highlight those is that I follow the shape they have to create these little zigzag shapes instead of creating the C shape that I do with straight bangs. But everything else remains the same. Just use an airbrush to soften the highlight and then try to blend it in. After 
After that, we color our liner. And if you feel like it, you can add a couple of extra hair strands. You don't always have to do this because short hair is pretty compact, but if you feel like it and if it suits the character that you're drawing, then go ahead. And we're pretty much done. These are the four hairstyles we tackled today. Here they are. I hope you found this tutorial useful. It is my first time doing one of them, so I don't know how it's gonna come out. I don't know if it's gonna be good enough. Please let me know in the comments. Also, let me know if you would like me to do any other type of hair or if there's any specific hairstyle you want to see how I color or draw. And if I gather enough, I will probably make a part two. I don't know, only time will tell. If you follow this tutorial and post it on social media, please tag me at it's princess rosa i have an instagram i have a tiktok and i have a twitter but i always forget i have a twitter but you can just tag me there and i'll get the notification and remember that i have one all the links will be in the description so yeah don't forget to follow me there because if i only get one comment or like a really simple hairstyle i might as well just make a tiktok or a reel about it and not a, a whole week endeavor of a video don't forget to like and subscribe my name is princess rosa and i'll see you in the next video bye